Uh, Senator Gregg, let's start with you first on this. The situation we find ourselves in, or maybe more importantly, that Europe finds itself in right now, maybe not hugely surprising, but here we are. What do we do? Well, it's a self-inflicted wound to, wound to a, a large extent. Uh, obviously, the Russian situation has made it much more acute. But it, when you basically shut down your production capability in nuclear, coal, and gas, and try to transition immediately to alternative source energies, it doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. And so, as a practical matter, you're going to see a very severe recession in, in Europe, as the head of Deutsche Bank said this morning. And further, the people who are most harmed, of course, are the low-income and moderate-income individuals who are on fixed incomes and can't adjust to a massive increase in their energy bill, which is being driven in large part by stupid public policy on the issue of, of global climate change. Uh, and, and so it really is unfortunate. Uh, I think our job as a nation, however, is to try to alleviate it as much as possible by shipping them as much LNG as we can. And ironically, this administration uh, just significantly handicapped our major LNG producers' capability to, to produce and, and ship uh, LNG to Europe. Uh, by putting them behind the eight ball on one of their uh, one of the approvals they needed in order to keep their LNG production way up, uh, so <clears throat> you've got this administration basically speaking out of both sides of its mouth on the issue of energy policy, uh, and you've got Europe, which is suffering from an energy policy which this administration seems to want to replicate. Christy, do you disagree with anything the judge just said? Oh, I disagree with a lot of what the governor just said. As Joe likes to call it, the big green lobby that pushed this um, green transition in Europe, if it had been more successful, then Europe would have a more diversified portfolio mm. right now of energy sources. And what we're looking at in Europe, just as the news has been reported, is Putin and his country turning off the gas to Europe. And it's a very dire situation. They will get through this winter only through energy efficiency and making changes to how they're using energy right now. Mm -hmm. If the UK were in a situation where it wasn't entirely reliant on natural gas and had more sources for energy, they'd be in a much better position. <coughs> so I just, the, the concept that it is as a result of shifting to clean energy sources that they control versus what a dictator, a petro dictator like Putin controls, is just doesn't add up. Christy, what to to run the cars and, and, and even if they're EVs, to power the grid and to heat the homes in Europe and in Germany writ large, if you're not going to use nuclear or hydrocarbons or coal for the grid, if you're not going to use any of those and the transition wasn't fast enough, which thing are you talking about they needed to transition quicker to? Would it be solar or wind or do you have like a magic, uh, just plug it in the wall and it works? What, what would you, just give me a real answer on what they should have transitioned faster to if it doesn't include hydrocarbons or nuclear or coal? What should they have, uh, have done so that they'd be running their entire country, everything be heated and cooled, people would be driving, jet airplanes would be flying around? What would it be? This is not an imaginary world, and certainly nuclear is a clean source that needs to be a part of the equation, at least in the near term, as long as it's economically viable. So that is a necessary source as we transition. But it is a diversified portfolio. It's a full array of clean options that are going to be necessary to like transition. What? Rather, like what? Like, like what? Nothing is, clear is as I just economically feasible. Senator solar. Judd, is there anything that, that, that besides what I mentioned? Do you know any cold fusion? Maybe what? What is it? It's not wind or solar. It can't. It doesn't do it. Hydrogen, maybe. Do you know, Judd? Uh, well, no, there isn't anything. Uh, you can't maintain a base load uh, with alternative source energies yet. It just simply won't happen for another 20 or 30 years. If you're going to have base load capacity to maintain a, a very sophisticated economy like Europe or our own, you've got to have the capacity to produce energy uh, fairly cheaply. And that involves primarily in our country gas. Uh, and in Europe, it should probably use gas. I mean, obviously, nuclear is an option, but building a nuclear plant takes 20 or 30 years. So uh, you can't do the base load. And if you can't have base load, you can't have an economic 
prosperity. You basically are forcing people to dumb down or to reduce their standard of living uh, so that you can have a political win on the issue of alternative source energy, which isn't available. And, and it's a real problem for the people in Europe. I mean, they're going to see it in real terms, what bad policy has done to their lifestyle. It's going to reduce their quality of life. And it's going to, for some people, it's going to be a stress that's going to be acute. Also, you got to remember, Europe's talking about price controls now. I mean, is there a better way to create more scarcity and rationing than price controls? They, want, they should be doing the opposite. They should be doing production, not price controls.